Hey you guys, what is up? So today we are gonna be trying something new. Someone commented in the comments recently, what the heck happens when you mount a full frame telephoto lens to my G9? And I thought to myself, why have I never done that before? I mean, I do that all the time with some of my other lenses. I have a Metabone speed booster that I used to use on my G9 all the time with other lenses. But why have I never tried mounting a full frame telephoto lens to a micro four thirds camera. So today we're gonna find out what that does. So first thing we're gonna do is go grab Tupac a home over here on the bridge. Oh, we get some nice little, uh, Light there. All right, and now that we've got Tupac the Toucan set up over there, we are going to test this out for the first time. I've got my um, G9 right here, as you can tell, Metabone Speed Booster. That's adapting this Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter Canon EF mount lens. And we've got that on the end. And let's see how this thing does. Let's turn this on. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Something I am noticing right off the bat is this image stabilization almost seems better than it is with my S1R. A little bit of like jumps, but in general it's smoother. Let's take a picture of this. That looks gorgeous though. All right, so now the real test though is comparing this to Panasonic Lumix 100 to 300 millimeter that I showed you guys in the review the other day. So effectively this on a micro four thirds um, lens because of the type of speed booster that this is, this goes down to 380 or something like that and then you times that by two, you're at about 740. Um, so you're effectively having a 740 full frame equivalent reach on this lens. So that's pretty impressive, that's pretty awesome, and plus you're getting all the glass that comes in a full frame lens, and so I'm kind of hoping that'll help sharpen out the whole frame as a whole. It seems like it's kind of pretty relatively sharp across the whole frame. We'll have to see and find out when we compare it really on the screen. But first, I wanted to throw on that 100 to 300, take the same exact shot from the same exact spot, and see if it turns out well. All right, so let's switch this out. Throw on the 100 to 300. Just check out the size difference on these things really quick. Yeah, there's pretty, pretty good size difference there. All right, let's try this out. So, now we've got 5.6 again. Okay, there we are. All right, let's get a picture of this. All right. So after looking through the photos, I noticed a couple of things I just wanted to share with you guys. First of all, something I forgot to mention while I was shooting was that the autofocus with the speed booster connected to the Sigma 150 to 600 seemed to be lightning quick. It seemed to be almost just as quick as the 100 to 300 millimeter that I have that's built in native lens for the Panasonic. That speed booster is just an awesome piece of equipment. I've used it for a long time and someday maybe I'll have to do a review just on that specific piece of equipment because it's just so great. And also something else I just wanted to repeat to just remind you guys of is that because of the speed booster and just the way that it all works, the conversion between the two, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter gets quite a bit more reach than the Panasonic 100 to 300 millimeter when it's converted down to the micro four thirds format and you're gaining those stops of light. But now let's compare those photos. So both of these two photos shot at 5.6 for the f-stop, which is the lowest the Panasonic 100 to 300 could go, and the Sigma 150 to 600. So the first thing that I noticed comparing the two is just the dramatic difference in the bokeh. The bokeh in the Sigma 150 to 600 is so much more circular, so much more clean, as compared to the 100 to 300. It's a little bit more kind of like a, an oval shape and kind of has points at the end. And the reason for that is if you think of a micro four thirds lens, it's so much more compact and it kind of has to get into a barrel almost and that glass has to kind of fit into a tighter space. So it kind of winds up barreling around the edges. Whereas with that Sigma 150 to 600, there's so much glass in there that it's able to create more circular bokeh. Sigma is a brand that typically builds their lenses quite a bit thicker and wider than they need to 
technically, in order to be able to fit more glass in there, one of the cool side effects of that is they get a lot of really good corner sharpness. Every Sigma lens I've ever used has great corner sharpness, and so that's something I love about this 150 to 600, and it's very evident between the bokeh of the two when you're comparing that between these two lenses. The second thing I want to talk about is obviously that reach. You can see the difference in these two photos between the reach, so essentially you're getting a little bit more reach out of this lens, almost comparable to that Panasonic 100 to 400 millimeters that so many people have commented about to me before that I've tested out before. It's a very similar reach, not quite as much. I think it's about 50 millimeters short when you do the conversion, 60 millimeters, somewhere around there. So you're getting a ton of reach out of this as compared to that 100 to 300. So probably a better comparison in this situation would have been that 100 to 400, but I don't own it. And I wasn't able to go out and rent it right now because the camera shop in town <laughs> closed down. So there's not really a lot of good local rental options for me. The next thing I want to talk about is while these two images are compared 5.6 to 5.6 f-stop, with the Sigma on the speed booster, you can get it all the way down to 3.9 on your f-stop. So this image will just get drastically more shallow than the image was before when you're talking about that micro four thirds and a 5.6. Essentially, in a certain sense, you're getting a very similar shallow depth of field as you would to a full frame camera. So that's one of the coolest things about using a speed booster I'm finding out right now at this moment with this telephoto lens. Of course, I've done this in the past, but with the telephoto lens, this is new to me. So let's compare the two right now. What do I like? What do I not like? So this was kind of mind boggling for me. I loved this experience just being able to test this out. Literally the first time I ever tested this out with this telephoto lens was what you guys saw right now. So it was cool to be able to see what the heck happened with this. What would I recommend? So this Sigma lens comes in at full price at around $1,000. This Panasonic lens comes in at full price around $600. You guys saw my review last week. Of course you're gonna be saving money if you go with this Panasonic lens. Of course, you're also gonna be saving money in the aspect of you don't gotta buy that speed booster. If you have the speed booster already, then you're saving a ton of money. If you don't, the speed booster itself costs, I think it's like $600, $700, I kinda of forget now. Um, it's been a while. However, what I think is a more interesting comparison and what I wish I could have shown you guys is that Panasonic 100 to 400 millimeters that so many people have been talking about. For that lens at full price, you're paying about $1,700. For the Sigma lens, plus the Metabone Speed Booster, you're paying about $1,700 at full price. So when you're comparing those two lenses, let's just look at the specs for a second. First of all, you got a full frame lens on that Sigma 150 to 600 millimeters. That full frame lens is gonna get nice glass all the way through. That corner sharpness is just amazing for what I talked about. When I tested out the 100-400, I know it had a lot of that similar kind of sharp oval shape bokeh in the corners when I was shooting with it before and the corner sharpness was still not the greatest. So this Sigma 150 to 600 when you're adapting it seems like it's able to get rid of a lot of that corner softening and that bad bokeh in the corners and the sides. So in that situation when you're looking at that I take that Sigma. However the downside when comparing the two is obviously going to be that weight. That Sigma is going to weigh a lot more whereas that Panasonic 100 to 400 millimeter is gonna weigh a lot less. And obviously, if you're even comparing the 100 to 300 that I just shot in the video, you're gonna be using a lot less weight. Sharpness-wise, they seem to be relatively similar, the 100 to 300 and the 150 to 600. And with the 100 to 400, I'd imagine it's somewhat similar. When I used to do some tests with that 100 to 400 and the 100 to 300, the center sharpness turned out to be relatively the same. So in that aspect, you're probably shooting at a similar ratio. However, what I really wanna talk about is being the huge pro to this 150 to 600 millimeter Sigma lens as opposed to the 100 to 400 is that the 100 to 400 millimeter Panasonic at the minimum f-stop you're getting 6.3 yet with that Sigma 150 to 600 millimeters when you mount it down to that micro four thirds with the speed booster you're getting a whopping 3.9 stops of light when you're talking about wildlife photography. That is huge. People pay a ton of money in the full frame world <laughs> to get down to that low of light. That is just a drastic difference in light. You go from 6.3, 5.6, 5.0, 4.5, 4 4.0, slightly less at 3.9. Why did I never think of this before? You can literally shoot at almost two less full stops of ISO. So let's say you're at 3,200 ISO, you can almost crank that all the way down to 800 ISO and still get the same lighting. That is incredible, and I can't recommend that to you guys enough. Just my two cents, 
If you guys are thinking of getting a bigger, better lens for your Micro Four Thirds system as compared to your 100 to 300 millimeter, if you already have that or if you don't already, you're wanting to invest more, I would recommend getting the Speed Booster with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeters adapted. Autofocus is just as quick nearly and you're gonna be getting even more sharpness in the corners, better bokeh, better shallow depth of field, which is the most important thing in your wildlife photography. And you're gonna be getting able to get more light in, less noise, cut that noise out, and you're gonna be able to get amazing shots, which for the Micro Four Thirds system is one of the harder parts for it, is being able to keep low amounts of noise in low light. Just to put this in comparison, if you've ever heard of the Panasonic 200 millimeter Prime 2.8, to be able to get that up to the same focal length as the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeters adapted down, you're having to pay for the two times teleconverter plus the lens itself, which is gonna run you close to $3,000. I think it's a little bit under, probably around 2,700, 2,800. And you're gonna be able to get 4.0 stops of light because you're throwing a teleconverter onto it. So essentially, you're paying a lot more for the same amount. And so this is a great solution to be able to save $1,000, $1,500 plus being able to get the same results. All you gotta be able to do, put up with the weight, and you're gonna be able to get amazing results out of this lens. I can't stress how cool this is, how cool of a discovery this is, and I hope that for you guys who are dedicated to the Micro Four Third system, want to invest into the Micro Four Third system more, you consider something like this. And plus, with the upside of when or if you ever invest into full frame in the future, there you go, you got an adapted lens ready for you to use. Geez, I love doing these Micro Four Thirds full frame comparisons, mixing and matching. I think you guys love them too, that's why I get so many freaking views on these videos as compared to my other videos. <laughs> so, let me know what you guys think, let me know what you guys think about this video, what I'm kind of sharing with you guys, let me know what you think about all these Micro Four Thirds in full frame comparison, review, kind of side by side videos that I like to do. And if you like them, let me know, I'll do some more of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to see you guys next time.